Now for this one, what I do is I look for the cat ears. You see these cat ears? Yeah. See these cat ears? I typically will position myself behind the cat ears. This fight overall is pretty easy, man. There's only like really two hard mechanics. And other than that, you just follow the Dorito or follow the player, whatever. So you want to have your marker set up like this, man. That's what I would recommend. A, B, C, D, and then one, two, three, four. This will help you with a bunch of later. Protean spots are very, very important in this fight. And I'll go over them when we get there. This first mech is just a raid AoE. Like it's kind of confusing because like I don't even know why they put this in here because it literally is impossible to kill you. Be so like this raid AoE is just going to go off and then he's not going to deal any more damage for fucking, I don't know, man, for a really long time. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, so there's a raid AoE and then he's going to go into this panel phase. All right. Uh, this panel phase is kind of like, I don't know, the, the main gimmick of this fight. Um, so, so it looks, it looks way more confusing than it actually is. And there's multiple ways that you can do this. Because you can see he's going to turn in the middle and then the outside is going to turn. In a lot of these, you don't even have to look at which way the platform is turning. But, I mean, you can. Like, if you're going to trace the lines, right? So then this this is going to go this way, right? So then this is going to be here. And then these things on the outside. See how this is red? This is red up here. This is blue. Well, that means that this one is going to be the opposite of whatever it is. So you can, like, trace the lines and stuff if you want. Uh, or, like I said, typically there's going to be a person with this above their head. And you follow that person. But if there's not, or if you actually want to learn how to do the mechanic... Oh my god, dude. Look at my offline chat. Look at this. This is ridiculous. All right, anyway. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, this is going to spin. And then... The blue fires out like this. So see this blue over here? The blue is gonna fire out like this. It's gonna it's gonna be a triangle. You know, if you see like it's a you know it's a triangle, so it's just gonna fire out like a triangle, just like Zodiac. And then the red is just a block. So like let's say that this red right here rose up, it would cover like this half or whatever. Basically covers whatever half of the arena, you know, that the red is on. So that's just how these panels work. You you just basically follow the line. Um, that's it. Or you can follow the player. Uh, so this was, uh, this was blue. This was blue in this case. Now the second one, okay. The second one is always like this. You never even have to look at the lines or, well, you don't have to look at the rotation at all. The only thing you have to look for are these two lines right here. You see this V. Okay. The safe spot is always opposite of the V for the second one. So don't even look at the lines. It's, it's whatever. Just go on the opposite. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, it's always the opposite. Um, and then that's how you do the first two. So we let it play real quick. Like I said, man, this fight is this fight is a little. This fight's pretty easy. Um, the only there's really only two somewhat difficult mechanics, and that's like toward the end. Uh, yeah, there's a tank buster here. Nothing in this fight does damage. Like, nothing in this fight does any damage whatsoever. Those, like, those panel phases, you can just eat the stack if you want to. You just mid it, and you can eat it. You can eat two stacks. Uh, so, okay. So, anyway, there's a tank buster there. Uh, you don't even have to pop cooldowns and you live. Probably not. I don't know, man. Like, it's, it, it's, it's a really light-hitting tank buster. This phase is also pretty easy. It's always going to start, like, right here, or it can also start, like, over here. Typically, you have group one up here and then group two down here. At the beginning of the instance, you'll pick your protean spot, and then you'll, you'll be in your groups based on that or whatever, you know? So, like I said, man, this is pretty easy, too. Uh, you're just going to rotate. Both groups are just going to rotate and there's going to be two of three possible mechanics. Okay. So, so this is a spread. So the three possibilities are spread or light party stack or partners. If it's spread, it'll look like this. If it's a stack, it'll be one of those big stack AOEs and you just, you just stack on the player. And if it's partners, it will be two enumerations where both players need to stack in. But again, like I said, this fight doesn't do any damage. You can actually live through the enumeration if you only have one person in it. I mean, I'm pretty sure you have to admit, I know a tank doesn't have to have anything. Uh, if you play tank in this fight, you can just literally do whatever the fuck you want. You can go wherever you want. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You'll live through like 99% of every mechanic. Uh, so we had a group group split into light, light party stacks. Now, 
After the second mechanic, he's gonna start doing this radial flagration or whatever. And all that is is a protean. So your protean spot are gonna be very important. So like typically you're gonna have something like tank there, DPS there, tank or healer here, DPS here, tank or healer right here, DPS here, DPS here, and tank or healer here. Uh, I like putting the tank north and either west or east. I don't like putting the tank south. Typically, you don't want to put two melee together, but I guess in this case, it doesn't really matter too much. But anyway, so you have your protean spot here. So after the second mechanic, you're just going to go to your protean spot. And party finder typically does true north relative. So you're just going to go to your marker and see how everybody's on their marker. You can also tell on the ground these lines right here. These lines are like your best friend. Like these lines are so important. You typically will always want to be on these lines for a majority of mechanics in this fight. Um, so yeah, so you rotate. Uh, and then this move right here, Inferno, is just an AoE. However, uh, when he has his when he has his wing out, it changes into a spread with a bleed uh so then you know you move on to the next panel phase okay the next panel phase you don't have to look at the you now okay if you don't want to trace the lines the way i do it and it's worked for me like every time almost uh maybe there's a configuration where it doesn't but for me anyway the first one is always going to be like um it's always going to be, you're going to, okay, so you're going to find this thing right here. Going to find this. Now, remember last time it went the opposite. Well, this time you're going to go max melee in between one of these. So both of these spots down here are safe. So for the second one, you're going to go right here and then in between these lines. Both of these are safe. Now, depending on the configuration, you can stand on this line, but sometimes this line is not safe, but in between these will always be safe. So this is two triangles. Okay, now for now for this one, what I do is I look for the cat ears. You see these cat ears? Yeah. See these cat ears? I typically will position myself behind the cat ears, and then whichever way that it's rotating, I go that direction and up. Okay. So right here, you're gonna locate the cat ears. Then because it's rotating this way, you're gonna go right here and up one line. And I'm pretty sure you can do that every time. So you don't have to be where I am. I just didn't move all the way over here, but you see where Trank is. This is gonna be safe for him. It's right is is as long as you're on the correct side of the line. Okay, well I got hit because I'm bad. But as long as you're on the correct side of the line, <laughs> you're good. <laughs> Sorry, this was from a farm a few like a few days ago. <laughs> Alright, so this ad phase, it's really easy. Typically you want to kill this guy in the middle first, then you want to kill this one, then you want to kill the two tank ones, and then you want to kill the two DPS ones. These ads will always spawn in the same spot. They will always do the same thing. This one ad right here does an AoE that puts like a burn stack on the on the party. That's why you want to kill it first. The second ad puts these AoEs on the ground. So it's just kind of annoying. So you want to get rid of that guy. And then you want to kill the two tank ones just because, you know, just honestly, this phase is so easy. It kind of doesn't matter as long as you kill this one first. As long as you kill this one first, you just you just kill whatever, man. Like like I said, this 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 ad phase is like super easy. And then these two down here, they're gonna put a tether on a random player that's not a tank, and you just need to take the tether to the outside of the arena because it's gonna do a cone. And you can hit like three targets here and stuff. Okay, so here there's the tether. They're taking the tether outside. Killing the middle guy here. All right, now there's the tank tether. Uh, surprisingly enough, this tether does more damage than the boss, so you will actually need cooldowns for this tether. <laughs> uh, I don't know why they, they made this fight deal negative damage. But anyway, yeah, so you kill all the adds, and then you can attack the boss, and he's going to do this. He's going to do the ultimate, you know, or whatever. Um, and... Uh, 
you just mitigate it, man. You just reprisal, just mitigate it. It's whatever. I say that as we don't have reprisal. Well, I guess I put it on last second. But anyway. But anyway, so yeah, the ad phase is done. Um, okay, so then this this is this is the first difficult mechanic in the fight. Uh, this one coming up. So he's gonna he's gonna whip out his wing here. All right. Now he's got his wing. Now, whenever he casts Inferno, it's going to be a spread with a bleed. So basically during this phase, you always want to be like, you will always want to start in your Protean spot. It's very important. You always want to start in your Protean spot. Um, so Flame Spire brand. So this is going to mark tanks and healers. This is role based. So every tank and healer will get the same thing and every DPS will get the same thing. So it's either going to be tank healer in and DPS out or vice versa. Okay, so in this case, it is tank healer in. And how you can tell is if you look up here. So this is a spread, a spread, a stack, and a spread. These icons right here are flares. So you have four people with a flare and a spread. You have three people with a spread and one person with a stack and a spread. This is basically going to do like an X. So it's going to be like that. It can either be cardinal or intercardinal. So how you want to do this is you're going to want to stand in between the two lines. There's a line right here and a line right here. Well, you want to stand right here. You and your partner, these are like color coded. So basically like this guy's going to move here. This guy's going to move here. I'm going to move here. He's going to move here. So you're, so you're going to want to stand in between your two markers. Why that is, is because you want to make sure that you're on the correct side as fast as possible. So, okay, so it's Cardinal. So this means that Cardinal is going to be dangerous. So right here is going to be death. So that means that you want to be right here. You want to be intercardinal because this AOE is going to be like, it's going to completely dumpster all the middle right here. So the safe spots are like the intercardinal. So what's going to happen is because the DPS need to get out with flare, your movement is both players are going to stack right here. The player that needs to move in is going to go up. The player that needs to move back. You could do this and then you can go over here. That's typically what I do. Because after this AOE, there's going to be another AOE that's going to be like this. And the safe spot is going to be on the outside here. And this will no longer be safe right here. And then after that, when you move to the center, wherever the people that came into the center from, you're just going to move back on that marker. And then because these players have to rotate to the other marker, they're just going to take one step in and stand on the marker here. Because at the very end of this mechanic, you're going to need to spread. So you're going to move in for the stack. I just kind of back up a little bit. There you go. There's a spread. Okay. Well, they kind of goofed. Oh man, I wish I had better footage. Okay. Well, anyway, well, anyway, we did it right. We did it right. So you get the point. Okay. <laughs> man, come on. Why are you goofing my footage? We can look at that again real quick. All right. So the brand goes out. Tanks and healers are in because the stack is on a healer. Flares are on DPS. Get in between your markers. Then right here, you're going to see which is safe. So the intercardinal is safe. Going to move in. And then just spread out in the middle. You can kind of use this ring. Like the melee can keep up time because this is a melee and you can stand on your marker. So if you ever have to go to a cardinal, you can always like back out to the marker if you choose so. Let me see if I can get some better footage. Leo can just edit this out. All right, Flame Spire brand. Let's see if I get, let's see if tanks and healers get out. Okay, good. This is really good. All right, so this is the out version. So you get in between your markers like normal. Okay. So I back out. I run to the side. Okay, well, I'm a, um, well, I'm a tank, so I don't have to run to the side. But anyway, so... <laughs> Man, this is horrible footage too. Hold on, let me see if I can get another one. All right, so tank healer, tank healer out because they have a flare. Get in between your markers. Okay, intercardinal is safe. Okay, so. All right, so I just want to point out that I didn't move to where I was supposed to, but that's be but that's because I'm greedy. This dude, this fight does no damage, okay? All right, the fight does no damage. All right, it's not my fault that the fight does no damage, okay? I'm not gonna be blamed for that, okay? That's Yoshi's fault. So anyway, if you have the flare, you want to move here, 
Then you go here. Then you go here. But if you're a tank, you can just obviously eat this. And then you can move to the... I mean, look, I didn't want to lose uptime, okay? All right, look, look, look. I'm a Dark Knight. I'm using TBN. Okay, so you see the safe spot. So here's the safe spot. This right here is the safe spot. You can go here, then here, then take one step into the marker. Basically, this line right here, it's safe on this side for now. But then when this AOE goes off, you take a step in, it will be safe on the other side. And then you want to get to your marker. All right. And then this part right here, uh, this is where, again, you will want to be in your protean. You'll be, you're going to want to be spread. Okay, so Inferno. So this one is going to be a spread plus a bleed. So it's a spread. Also puts a bleed on you. And, okay, this right here, Scalding Ring. Okay, this is important because this is either going to be Scalding Ring or, or Scalding Signal. If it's Ring, that means you need to be inside his hitbox. If it is Signal, you need to be outside of his hitbox. In this particular case, it is Ring. So it's a spread into a spread. The Inferno is a spread and you will remain spread for this um, because what's going to happen is he's going to fire out AoEs. Now, it is extremely important that you stay on your line. You want to stay on this line at all times. Okay, so regardless if it's in or out, you want to be on this line at all times. Because what's going to happen is he's going to fire out a line AoE and then later that line AoE is going to come back. So if the line AoE is not on these lines and it's all jacked up like this, when it comes back, it can mess you up for the next mechanic, for the next part of this mechanic. So you're going to want to spread then remain spread on your lines, either in or out, ring or signal. There's the lines. Now, he's going to turn and face a direction. Okay, now in this case, he's just facing north. Okay. So, you're going to want to get behind him. You're going to want to get behind him. And, okay, so you see this right here. You need to look at his wing. If it's multiple like flowers that means it's a spread if it's one big flower like one big flower it means it's a stack when he turns he's basically gonna do a half room cleave so because he's facing a everything from right here is is death and you also have all of those things returning this is what your safe spot is gonna look like so these are your safe spots here so you have one here one here one here one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. But keep in mind that if you're a melee, you want to try to be max melee because those lines, they're going to like intersect right here. So you want to make sure that you're max melee. So typically what Party Finder does is they will base everything off of the back of the boss. Okay, so in this case, you basically have four pizza slices to put players in. So typically what Party Finder will do, they will put a melee here, tank here, tank here, melee here, ranged here, range down here, healer down here, and healer right here. That is what you do if you have to spread. If you do not have to spread and you have to stack, that's even easier because all you do is you stack in this one or this one. Sometimes people stack right here. Sometimes people stack right here. I've done it in both. It's really easy to adjust. You just go where the people are, basically. But you're going to stack in one of these two. Let me see if I can find some footage with a stack. Okay, this is... All right, perfect. This is a stack. Okay, this is a stack. So you see this flower? So this is a stack. I'm going to stack right here. I think this is a super clutch wings. I think we barely live in it's because of wings. Yeah, okay. So there's the stack. Okay, well, I guess we all don't barely live. Okay, well, you know what, man? Just the red mage lives. Whatever, it's fine. All right. So anyway, so after that mechanic, it's going to be a double tank buster. And these tank busters, nothing in this fight does damage. You can literally stack the two tanks on top of each other. And as long as you pop all your CDs, you'll live. But you can just have one tank here, uh, one tank here. And what this is, is it's a massive conal cleave. So ideally, you want to you wanna put it like that. You know what I mean? So you have like one tank here and it's firing towards this guy. And you have another tank here and it's firing towards that guy. But like I said, this does like zero damage. So... You know. All right. All right. Okay, let me get some other footage. <laughs> yeah, that's looking rough, dude. There's the double tank buster.
And then finally the, well, there's another panel phase. Okay, so this panel phase is exactly like the other panel phases. Um, so for the first one, so for the first panel phase, I'm pretty sure it's always one red or one blue. So this one's kind of easy. You can just follow this, you know, um, that's typically what I do on this one. So this will be like here and then this one will be here. So it's typically pretty easy. So yeah, so this will be red, pretty sure. And this is, I'm pretty sure this is always just one. And it can be either red or blue. Um, so there is a, okay, so what I do for the second one is, um, okay, so what I do for this second one is I find the cat ears. On the other one, you went this way and then up. But on this one, you go opposite and then you would go down. For me, this has worked. This one is gonna be a red and a blue. I think this one is always a red and a blue. I don't think I've seen it in any other configuration. Um, so, so you would go opposite and then you would go down. Mm -hmm. When I mean opposite, I mean like, okay, so if you look at the cat ears, so because it's rotating this way, you would look at the opposite cat ear. So you would go like right here and then you would go down. And when you go down, you need to look to see if it's the red one or the blue one. If it's the blue one, you can just stand right here. But if it's the red one, then you actually need to go down all the way to this line. And you can tell which one it's going to be based on like these two. So anyway, uh, let's see if I let's see if I get it right. Okay, yeah. I guess you can always just go down to that second one. So hold on, let me get another piece of footage. So again, find the cat ears. And then if it's going this way, we're gonna go right here. But if it's going like this way, we're gonna go right here. Okay, you go, you go opposite and down. Right and down. Okay. Yeah, so again, again, this is, this is, I think this is literally the same pattern, actually. What the heck? Anyway, look, this is this is what works for me. You can also trace the lines, too. Um, the more I've done this, the more I've realized you don't actually need to trace the lines. Um, there are definitely patterns on the ground. Um, I haven't spammed this as much as other people, so other people might, they might notice more patterns or something, but these are just the patterns that work for me. Um, okay, so this is the last mechanic in the fight. All right, now, okay, this is limit cut with a tether. This mechanic looks really hard, but it's actually really, really easy. This is going to have, you know, one through eight, and, you know, one's going to go here, two's going to go here. Now, we use northwest. This is north. West and this is Northeast. Okay. So I'm pretty sure party finder always does Northwest Northeast. You're basically going to put the cut on these markers and you're going to put the tether on these markers back here. Odd will go over here and evens will go over here. So if you're one and two, you get in a position right away. If you're seven and eight, you can actually bait this tether. So seven can stand right here and eight can stand right here. And the tether will automatically go on you because I'm pretty sure it's proximity based. So once you get your tether, you just back up slowly to the marker. Let's see, three, four, five, and six, they can just stand right here. So three and five will stand right here. Two and four will stand right here. And what happens is one is gonna get cut, then they're gonna grab the tether. Two is gonna get cut, then they're gonna grab the tether. When this happens, three is gonna replace here. Four is gonna replace here. Seven and eight are gonna back up. Now one and two are right here and then after three and four get these they're gonna grab the tether basically you take your cut then you grab the tether take your cut grab the tether that's pretty much it it's really simple i would say that one two seven and eight are the easiest uh because you do your mechanic pretty much right away okay so there's two okay so i have six so i'm not so i'm not doing anything i'm just going on my correct side now you see how eight and seven already have the tether. So they bait it. Now they're going to go back on the marker. They're going to go back one and two. 
are going to pick up the tether. That's three and four. They're going to get the tether. Five and six. They're going to get the tether. And finally, seven and eight. And seven and eight don't have to get the tether. The tether goes away. And that's it. That's the entire fight. That's the entire fight. Uh, if your damage is good enough, uh, you can skip. Uh, you can skip this. Um, so, yeah. So, he does a repeat of Inferno. And he does a repeat of the Scalding Ring. We've already we've already done this before. Uh, at this point, it's just repeat. Um, and he, he will look at a direction. This is going to be spread. So you get in your spread positions. Wow, this guy is dead as shit. Oh, my Lord. See ya. Oh, my God. He made it. Okay. Wow. All right. So anyway, uh, the fight just repeats. You get another panel phase. And obviously, I don't see... I, I, I think I've seen this panel phase like once. Uh, I don't remember this panel phase in party finder in party finder. The chance of you not skipping this panel phase is extremely low. The DPS check for this is, is I cannot believe that they made this enrage so lenient. Like it's, it's actually crazy. Um, like I said, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know if there's any tricks to this panel phase because I think I've only seen it once and I don't remember it. But anyway, that's the whole fight. It's pretty easy. I would probably give it like... Let's see. Aesthetically, 9 out of 10. Like, I think Rubicante looks awesome. You know, I think his mechanic... Well, his mechanics look cool. The panels, I don't particularly like the panels, but I do think they kind of look cool. The music is 10 out of 10. The music is an absolute banger. This fight does drag ass. It does drag on. Basically, the panel phases kind of make this fight bad, in my opinion. You just stand there, and it's just... It's just really... It just starts to get really boring after a while. But anyway, those are my opinions. And you know what? That's it. That's it! Guide over.